Hey everyone, welcome to another Goody Reader review video. My name is Michael. And my name is Peter. We have here the Pocketbook Sense. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new e-reader and it's actually fairly solid if you watched our unboxing video. We were actually pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good build, build quality. Um, I mean, it's definitely not like what we've seen from Pocketbook before. Pocketbook's made some real clunkers in their day, but this one... Kind of breaks the mold. Yeah, in a, in a really positive way. So let's give you guys a sense of specs. It's six inches and it has eight ink pearl HD. The resolution is 1024 by 758, which is pretty standard for about 2013. It has Ouch. 212 DPI and a front light. Now, one thing that I'm actually impressed about is that it's a capacitive multi-touch mm -hmm. instead of infrared. Yeah. And as we go forward in our review, you'll see why that that's important. There's a one gigahertz processor, 256 MB of RAM, and four gigs of internal storage, but you have roughly about 3.1 when you take it out of the box for the first time. It reads a multitude of formats. Pocketbook is very progressive in the fact that they know that people are buying these e-readers to read a lot of different formats. So PDF, EPUB, FB2, DOC, DOCX, RTF, PRC, Mobi. So it, it basically plays nice with all of the open Kindle formats, as well as EPUB and PDF, yep. which are pretty well the most popular formats yep. out there. So Peter, give us the 360. Looks pretty cool from the front to the bottoms are more curved than the tops giving it a nice uh, unique look the screen and bezel are not flush but it's not as deep as say Kobo Glow HD or every other e-reader we've seen that has a uh, traditional ink screen we have a dark brown on the back I assume it comes in different colors because the barcode says dark brown as to differentiate between other colors we have side press buttons it kind of curls over like a thumbnail so you can press them with your finger as you're reading and it doesn't show on the front giving it a clean look on the bottom we have a micro usb port micro sd card slot and a power button and don't forget the awesome accessory loop you gotta love that accessory loop because it's 2015 and uh the rest uh, we have a light sensor up top and that is about all she wrote all right let's take a look at the software so this is the main home screen. I like it. It has a carousel of books that you have recently added to your device, mm -hmm. have purchased or have opened. You can see here that yesterday we added one new book to the e-reader. And on April the 10th, 518 yeah. new books were added because that's the date that it was actually released. And then on April the 10th, we've added another seven. Yeah. So if you hit the settings menu here, you see there's a bookstore, web browser, calculator. You can see all the different options here. Why would they put Klondike and not Solitaire? Yeah. Who knows how to play Klondike? I don't really know. Exactly. There's a couple apps here, chess, Klondike. Um, cool things like Scribble, which really only the Sony line of uh, e-readers had uh, preloaded. We got Sudoku, Mike's favorite game. Yeah. We have uh, Sent to Pocketbook, Notes, uh, a lot of cool stuff on here preloaded. Uh, Dropbox for Pocketbook is mm. cool because you can actually um, access your library of ebooks stored on it. Which is good because a lot I know a lot of people who don't have an SD card, but they just store all their books in their Dropbox right, and they right. usually access it on their different e-readers via the web browser, right. but you can actually do it here via an app. Now, it's important to note that this uh, e-reader is running Linux. It's not running Android like we originally thought when we did the unboxing video. Right. So you can't load your own apps on here or anything like that. But this is an e-reader. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to look at the e-reading experience, but we're also going to check out the front light as well as the web browser and a few apps so let's get right into it and open up a book that came preloaded on it called the king's own and immediately pete it's looking good yeah when we first uh, booted up a book a little bit uh ago before for this video looked great uh the text goes edge to edge it's quite a thin margin i really like that we'll tap the center and see what kind of settings we have uh, we'll just start with settings. We won't go through every single thing, but just to show you, 
This is pretty impressive. There's about 40 fonts here. This is by far the most preloaded fonts we've ever seen on an e-reader. There are tons. It's like looking at the drop-down on Microsoft Word. Yeah, There's totally. There's so many. And then custom is publisher's defaults. Now note, anytime you do anything on this, margins, line spacing, font size, it does the whole book. So it takes six to seven seconds every time you do that. I'll just give you an example of doing one or two things here. We'll do the line spacing. Ah, Peters, we all, my name's always on all the books. Yeah. What is up with that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you'll see that um, it, it has to really, you know, uh, li like the Kindle Voyage changes pretty quick, pretty live, but this one takes a while. We'll go to the biggest font just to show you what it's capable of. Yeah, changing the font's actually a slider bar yeah, instead of nice. predetermined options. Right. So this is really nice. You can really tell the curved letters like the O, the E's, they're really round. They're not pixelated. So it gives it a really good, uh, really good look to it. So I'll move that back down. So once it goes through the whole book and changes the font, we'll move on to some more settings. Now this isn't the only settings and options that we have no. on the C-Reader. The C-Reader is full it is. of great options. We're not gonna go to note, uh, rotate because it just changes the rotation uh, from landscape to portrait because there's no gyroscope. Now this is really cool. We have a lot of stuff up here. We have highlight because that's what it's already preset on. We have Scribble. Do, 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 do. Now, very few e-readers out there allow very you few. to scribble on it. Yes. Uh, Sony Digital Paper is one of them. Yep. There yeah, was the, the an T-line of Sony's and then a couple Icarus e-readers here and there, but not everyone does that. It's important to note that when you're drawing on an e-book, the e-book itself does not maintain the anything that you're doing. Right. It saves it as an independent file viewable in your notes here. Right there. So every time you use the scribble or the pen to highlight, it will it'll just note that down in the annotation section. <laughs> No ah, pun intended. Yep. Uh, but when we plug this into our computer to try to find these notes, they don't actually save them no. as independent files. Exactly. It's just on the e-reader. The eraser erases both highlights and pen strokes. Now this is a little bit of a problem because they carried over some of the OS features from the Pocketbook Ultra, which came with a camera. This one does not have a camera and yet the camera thumbnail is still there. It does nothing because this device doesn't have a camera. Uh, what else do we have? We have dictionary, lots of different dictionaries because this is very uh, multi-lingual uh, so you can have some settings there and find different dictionary uh, definitions in many different languages. Now if you long press a word we see even, even more, more options. Yeah, exactly. So a third set of all these options we have highlight to just make a highlight. We have note and this will be a good time to look at the keyboard. Uh, keyboard looks okay. You have a separate row for numbers. So we'll just go we and we'll look at uh, fast keyboard. Shift. Yep. Now remember, this isn't a shift button. This is a caps lock button because it never goes off until you press it again. So note that that is not a uh, shift button. And we'll press and hold once more. See what we get. We have look up in Google that opens the web browser. We'll show you the web browser later. We have dictionary lookup and then uh, send to different social media networks like Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, and a few different Twitter. Russian ones. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this one opens the web browser too. Right there. So you can send it to various different social media platforms. And that's basically the reading experience. Page turns are really fast. It doesn't, you know, fade out every single page. Not too much ghosting. It's a pretty all right e-reader. Yeah. For um, you reading. We're not done yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, I found that surprisingly, uh, you know, once you can get past the small delay when you're checking out like the text and stuff, page turns are really quick. Yeah, it gets it gets the job done. Yeah, every six pages you see a full page refresh, but we haven't seen any ghosting problems no. or anything like that. From so far, if you're reading Moby, PRC, EPUB files, it, this is a great e-reader. Yeah, I think so. Now. It does read PDF files as well. So we're gonna open up the Pocketbook Sense user manual. This is the one that comes preloaded on this device and then we'll show you a much more complex one after. So we're gonna do just some light rotate uh, navigation here. There's no mini map, so you have to kind of zoom out to find where you are. Pinch and zoom. This is the fastest pinch and zoom we've ever seen on any e-reader that doesn't blur out when you move it around. Uh, sometimes e-readers will be semi-quick but then they'll kind of pixelate and blur this one the image without rendering is almost the same as once you've finished it's very quick yeah and it's surprising because uh, the kindle voyage the kobo glow hd the barnes noble nook glow light 
it, they don't really have the capabilities to render and pinch and zoom text exactly this quickly in this efficiency yeah look at that efficiently efficiently very quick now things tend to slow down once you start looking at pdf files that have a lot of like complex layouts a lot of images and things like that and the overall size the dungeons and dragons monsters manual is over 100 mb so it's a very large pdf so turning pages it's all right yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 not you know it's not the fastest that we've seen but it's not the slowest as you can see as well pinch and zooming even on a complex document it's 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 quick but once you start scrolling yeah, around it tends exactly. to slow down and this is a uncut look at what this thing's really capable of sometimes it does lose itself and get a little confused and see it just it turned a page there and kept the zoom level so beware that you just have to be a little bit gentle with it or else it does stuff like this but uh, with the smaller PDFs it's great yeah so I, f I find or we have found from our experience that newspapers uh, PDF files that don't have a lot of complex right. Im imagery work fine. You can also do things like uh, column to column, fit to width, fit to height, fit to whole page, margin cropping on and off, and reflow. We'll show reflow because it's one of the most things that people ask for a lot. Basically strips away all the images, all the banners, and just leaves the text, which is very inconvenient in this type of PDF, but can be really useful in, say, technical documents where you just want to read. Yeah, and it also can pinch and zoom, and as you can see, when it's just getting a text, pinch and zoom is, is, is pretty fast. Exactly. All the settings remain consistent throughout uh, PDFs as well as EPUB. You can highlight, you can scribble, everything saves into your annotation list, and you can erase everything. So it's the same, just carried over as, as well as that awesome camera button. Yeah. I, I thought there'd be like a pinhole secret camera or something, but <laughs> it's just a carried over OS flaw. All right, so what we're going to show you next is the web browser. Now, web browsers on e-readers, don't expect them to be Oops. as good as your tablet or computer. Obviously, they're going to be very slow, but it's yeah, good to it's have one. Yeah, because it's a screen. It's, it's, it's refreshing. Right. So, yeah, you're not going to get that fluid experience. So, let's open up our favorites list. And we'll just click on the mobile version of our website, Good e-reader. It loaded it pretty quick. Got there all right. We're just on a regular Wi-Fi connection, and yeah, got there pretty fast. All right, let's uh, just click on an article and see how... Come on, pocketbook. There we go. And the image. Not bad. I guess you... When you're looking at sites that have images... Yeah, it gets a little bit... Uh... Oh, there we go. I think it thinks you clicked on it. Now I found that this e-reader is very prone to, uh, as you're dragging over things, it, it sometimes registers as, as a tap. Yeah. And it will turn a page, it'll open up a setting, it'll long press. So that is a little bit of a flaw. It's overly sensitive. I think so. Yeah. It's capable, but it's very sensitive. All right, so this e-reader does have a store that you can access but we've noticed that the prices on oh. the books are ridiculously expensive. USD. And it's, you're looking at, you know, average title here, Terry Pratchett, $15. But if you click on new books. That wasn't a carousel. You can see here $22, it's $21. Uh, you're paying a pretty penny. You're paying almost hardcover. Yeah, for digital. Prices here. Yeah, for, for the digital book. So bear in mind that best sellers limited, you're not going to find a lot of the new books that come out. You mean so, not on Bookland? <laughs> yeah. Really? So you're going to have to buy them at EPUB from other stores and then use Adobe Digital Editions on your PC right. once this is plugged in your computer via the micro USB cable to transfer books. And exactly. in a future video, we'll show you exactly how to do that. So this is the front light on Max. And as you can see, that it looks a little bit baby blue to yeah, me. Yeah, it's got some weird tinge to it. It's not quite 
entirely white, like a paper white or a Kobo. Yeah, so I feel that the the paper white two, the Kindle Voyage, and the Kobo Glow HD do a far better job. But that's not to say that this is terrible no. by any stretch of the imagination. No. But know that you do have a bit of a baby blue tinge. Let's go to this is important to note as well. If the glow light is off and you're in a lit room, this or dark room, this glow light button, uh, the logo here, is not there. It's only there at 1% or higher. So we're going to turn it down to about 75% here. So, to be honest, there's not much wrong with it in terms of inconsistencies. There's a little bit overexposed yellow at the bottom, uh, right about here where the LEDs are, and the rest is just pretty evenly distributed so it's quite impressive yeah if they just had the color a little bit different that would have been a lot better yeah i mean when it's this like on say we're about 50 percent mm -hmm. in a studio this is readable yeah. on a camera it probably looks a little bit darker mm -hmm. but i feel that this would probably be the the most ideal lighting levels if you're reading in bed at night with right. like you know a completely dark room yeah they give you the slider bar instead of just two or three options because they want you to find the option that fits you the best for example if you turn it down to 10 percent starting to get really dark you know you just you want to find that even light level for yourself yeah so yeah i mean it it's distributed corner to corner quite well it's just you know the wrong color yeah i Again, I mean, that's it's not the most terrible thing in the world. Like, this is light years better than the original Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. Oh, that yeah. That was, you, you know, which was really blue. This is like a combination of, like, sort of a light blue, cloudy blue. Yeah. But if this is your first e-reader, this is doing a perfectly good job. I'd say so. In the end, the pocketbook sense is a very competent e-reader. Yeah. I feel that... Anything that involves your standard ebook does a really good job. I, I like so. I like the fact there's a lot of fonts. You can increase the fonts via the slider bar. Very intuitive. I like the fact that you can draw on yeah. both PDFs and books. And a book, yeah. Yeah. And the web browser, it can do a, with a little bit of work with any type of sites that involve yeah. images. The lighting system, a little blue, mm -hmm. but I find that once you get past all that, I think this is like worth the hundred odd dollars that you're gonna be spending on it. It's definitely priced well. This is an e-reader that will appeal to people that have their own ebook collections. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend going to Bookland and buying books. As yeah. You're paying almost three times. You're paying for one book that you can buy three elsewhere. So if you're looking for an all-in-one solution to buy books, read books, this may not be the e-reader for you. But if you have a Dropbox collection, yep. you have a massive ebook collection yep. that you can easily load on an SD card, that this is a great e-reader for that. I'd say so. All right. So let us know your thoughts. You've heard ours. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you guys to what are your impressions are you happy with this what aspects of it do you feel that could use a little bit of work and what do you like about it drop a comment below for goody reader and a review of the pocketbook sense my name is michael this is peter everybody take care